Once again, Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Cikgu Hasnita. For a new visitor, I would like to give you a very warm welcome and thank you for subscribe and supporting this channel. It's been a while since our last meeting, right? So, I'm very sorry for the long delay but here we are now to continue with the second content standard on 3.2 Kepler's Law. So, that is Johannes Kepler, a German mathematician. Anything you know about him? If you do, please don't feel hesitate to share something in the comment section below. Okay? So, students, in this content standard, there are three learning standards you have to know very well. So, in this video, I'm going to discuss the first learning standard, which is to explain Kepler's law. And if you notice, in the first part of this video, I sang you a song, which I call it as a Lula Loop song. Hmm, so, what is this song has to relate with Kepler's? You will find the answer in this video shortly. So, are you ready to begin? Without further ado, let's begin with our discussion. Alright students, let us begin with Kepler's first law. So Kepler's first law states that all planets in the solar system move in an elliptical orbit where the sun is at one of its focus. And Kepler's first law, also known as law of orbits. So, from the Lula Loop song, Law of Orbits represent by the first verse, Lu. Okay? And do you understand the terms focus here means? Well, actually, let me explain to you in the next slide. So, how to determine the focus of an elliptical orbit? So, each elliptical orbit has two focus, or in plural, we call it as foci. So, where is this two focus lies at? These two focus is lies at the major axis of the elliptical orbits. And it can be determined by this mathematical expression where C squared equal to A squared minus B squared. Where C is refers to the distance from the focus to the center as shown by the blue arrow here. Okay, and A is the distance from the center of the ellipse to a vertex. Vertex is the radius at the major axis represented by this pink arrow. While B is the distance from the center of the co-vertex, which is the radius at the minor axis represented by the green arrow. Okay, so remember every elliptical orbit has to focus which is lies at the major axis and can be determined by this formula okay so how to construct an elliptical orbit let us do it together activity 11 which you can find in your textbook so our aim is to sketch the shape of an ellipse based on the concept of dual foci of so, to draw the elliptical orbits, these are all the materials required. You need a pencil, a thumbtack, A4 paper, a thread, a telephone tape if necessary, and a softboard. Okay, students, are you ready to begin and construct our elliptical orbit? Let us do it together. So, I will guide you along with this video. So, first and foremost, you prepare an A4 paper and fold it in this way as shown in this video okay and then we fold it in another way for twice fold for once and fold for twice okay so you are going to have this shape then we unfold the a4 paper and you are going to see there will be three points on it okay so this is the first point, the second point, and the third point. And what to do next? We place our thumbtacks on the first point and another one at the third point. Before that, you attach the thumbtacks with a thread 
for about 20 cm long. Okay, so we label the first point as F1, our first focus, and the third point as F2, our second focus. Then next, we tighten the thread with a pencil and bring it to the left side of F1 and we start to draw the shape. Make sure when you draw the shape, the thread is always tight. Okay, so we bring our pencil to the right side of F2 along the major axis. So you can see the half of the elliptical shape. Then we continue to complete another half by drawing the shape below the major axis. And next, we can remove the thumbtacks away. Okay, so you can see now this is the we have drawn the elliptical shape, which represents the elliptical orbit. Okay, where we have this is the major axis, this is the minor axis. And this is the center of the elliptical orbit where this is the two focus F1 and F2. So the next step, you can draw the sun at any one of these two focus, either at F1 or at F2. So I draw our sun, which is the center of the solar system at F1. And I draw my earth at any point along the elliptical line. Okay. So we are done with first Kepler, Kepler's first law, where an orbit of a planet in the solar system is an elliptical shape where the sun is at one of its focus. So what do you think about activity 11? Interesting, right? And I hope you have completed your elliptical orbits from the video I got to you just now. And students, now let us discuss a few questions related to our previous activity. Okay, question number one, very easy. Name the shape of the orbit owned by planets in the solar system. So what shape do they have? As you can see here, very good. It has an ellipse shape. Okay, now let's proceed with the second question. Describe how the distance between the Earth and the Sun changes when the Earth makes a complete orbit around the Sun. So what can you say? How to respond to this question? Well, you can say the distance is further at the major axis and it is shorter at the minor axis. Okay, now the third question. Discuss how the shape of the Earth orbits will be if the major axis now is almost at the same length as the minor axis. So logically, when the minor axis and the major axis has about the same length, definitely the shape will be almost round. And these are the conclusion we can make from Kepler's first law. Number one, all planets in the solar system have elliptical shape orbit. Number two, the sun always stay on the focus of the ellipse, either at the first focus or at the second focus. Number three, the major axis is longer than the minor axis. And then next, most orbit of the planets in the solar system actually have a major axis and minor axis of almost the same length. So number five, planets are assumed to make circular motion around the sun. And last but not least, the radius of orbit is the average value of the distance between the planet and the sun. So I hope with this you are clear with first Kepler's law. And now let us continue with Kepler's second law. Kepler's second law, also known as law of areas. It states that a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in an equal time. In Lula Loop songs, Kepler's second law represents by the middle verse La. Lula 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 Loop. Alright, students, to understand Kepler's second law, let us take a look at this diagram. It states here if a planet takes the same amount of time to move from A to B, and from C to D, okay, let's take an example. It moved from A to B at 10 seconds, okay? And also from C to D at 10 seconds. So the area of AB, this is AFB, will be equal to the area of CFD, 
okay and by using the same diagram you can see that the distance of AB is longer than the distance of CD can you respond to me why the distance of AB is longer compared to the distance of CD even though they are moving at the equal time which is 10 seconds very good this is because when the planet is closer to the sun it will move with a higher linear speed so we say the planet is moving at a higher linear speed from a to b compared to from c to d that's why the area is uh, sorry that's why the distance is longer at a b and shorter at c d all right, student, let us now continue with Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law states that, yes, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit, where Kepler's third law is also known as law of period. Lula, 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 loop, the loop back there. And this is the expressions for Kepler's third law where t squared is directly proportional to r cubed. We will discuss more brief on this on the next video. So don't miss them, okay? Where t is the orbital period of a planet and r is the radius of the orbit, okay? And to understand Kepler's third law, let us take a look at this example, okay? This is the diagrams of our solar system where you can see a planet which orbit with a larger radius has a longer orbital period. Okay. Second, the planets which are further from the sun takes a longer time to complete one orbit around the sun. For example, if you look at Mercury, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and it took about 0 0.2 years to make one complete orbit Compared to Neptune, the furthest planet from the Sun, it took about 164.8 years to do the same. Okay, so from this example, I hope you are clear what is Kepler's third law. Okay, and I guess that's all for today. So don't forget to join me again in the second part of this lesson where we are going to discuss two more learning standards. 3.2.2 to express Kepler's third law where t squared uh, directly proportional to r cube and the third learning standard is to solve problems using Kepler's third law. So what do you think about this lesson? So I hope you're clear now what is Kepler's first law, Kepler's second law and Kepler's third law. Thank you very much for joining me and see you again in the next video. So don't forget to sing to our song, the Lula Loop song. A Lula 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 Loop. Kepler's first law, Kepler's second law, Kepler's third law. So I hope you have, we will have a pleasant day. Assalamualaikum and see you again.